My name is Judd. My name is Rich. And this is Comic Strip AP of Sorcerer, featuring the story of Percival Louder. And when we last saw Percival, he was, like most badass sorcerers, he was in the hospital getting chastised by his mother. Every sorcerer game needs to have a part where your mom gets on you for being a sucky sorcerer, I think, right? It's tradition. It's just tradition. And uh, she tried to get him to come home, and he wasn't having it. And then Letitia Kyle came back, who was the detective from the first episode. That's a a deep cut from all of uh, nine episodes ago or ten episodes ago. Yeah, almost an hour ago. Yeah, just an hour ago, really. If if you're listening to it all at (laughs) once, it's a deep cut from an hour ago. And she asked him some questions, and she had put some things together. And Percival was pretty uncomfortable and said he was exhausted and not really having much proof that he had done any crime. But knowing that something was up, Detective Kyle left him. And that is where we left it. Percival is being like wheeled down the hall towards the exit of the hospital. And his mother is like waiting for him with the car. Nowhere near as cool as when Clarissa was waiting for me with the Rolls Royce. But right. All right. Right. Yeah, and I think your mother has a demonic driver too. And it's you realize that her driver is here and her black Cadillac is what's parked out front. That's kind of awesome. Yeah, and, it, and it's an old caddy, right? It's a 1972 caddy stretch, but it's perfectly preserved. It's just perfect. Um, it would look kind of tacky if it wasn't just a perfect time capsule of a 1972 caddy. I think you get in and it probably smells a lot like your childhood. And she says, we should go see about your building if you're feeling up to it. Yes, let's let's do that. The driver drives you through Manhattan and without saying a word, I think the, the, the driver is a, uh, a large man, wide shouldered. And you've never in, in all of your life, you've never heard him speak. I've often imagined what he might say if he did. Mm-hmm. And speaking of which, Rich, uh, let's let's talk about Percival a little bit. We're getting kind of a good look at him as he's riding in the car next to his mother. Who would you cast as Percival in a movie? Oh, I've always had Christian Bale in mind to okay. play Percival Louder. Kind of like a skinnier Christian Bale, not like a... Uh, Batman huge uh, yeah no yeah. no definitely not not machinist Christian Bale where he no, no, looks no, no, like no, no, no. please just yeah. give the guy a cracker yeah yeah please yes yeah generally like Christian Bale non Batman Christian Bale hair close to the scalp uh, a little bit cool. of a, a Van Dyke going on but at this nice. point he's got a full beard right because he's yeah yeah he's got I, I think I think if if you were watching the movie right that's how you could tell time went by is because he's got this kind of scraggly beard on now and he didn't yeah. at the beginning of the movie I think he was very clean cut yeah dark circles under his eyes mm-hmm. uh, he looks a bit wan yeah it's been a rough month cool and uh, his mother is Angelica Houston nice sm- smoking a cigarette perfect and he drives up to the side of the Flatiron building and parks. Flatiron is in rebellion. I've already had a member of my coven tell me. What does it want? Competition. I've been able to feed it with the coven. I'm the only sorcerer with something bound, and I've been able to keep their desire for their own demon. Uh, to use it to feed Flatiron, but now that Frederick has rebelled and I've been away for a month. Hmm. Well, I don't know where my coven is, Mother. I don't know what's happened. She walks out of the car and says, I'm going to bind this demon to myself, and then you're coming home. And she steps out of the car. I think she steps right into that kind of magical sorcerous space where people start moving walking by very quickly Mm -hmm. and starts to walk into the building to bind it to basically steal it from you uh i am following her awesome what are you doing i will come up to my mother and i'll grab her by the arm Mm -hmm. i will fix this 
you cannot maintain this from home and you're not moving, you can help me. Make a will roll. A will roll? All right. I happen to be decent at that will thing. I think she is too. Yeah. Didn't fall from or from this tree, right? Got a four. All right. Yep. I've got five coming at you. Cool. That is a mighty good roll. Oh. Oh, darn you. She, you're 110. Yeah, she got a 10. She beat you by oh, one. I got a nine and two eights with that 110. <sighs> okay. She starts to bind it. Um, she starts to walk through the building like she owns it. Mother. She throws a cigarette on the carpet and like puts out with a, a healed foot. Hmm. I smile as I realize what's happened, what she's doing. Yeah. Competition. She wants to bind flat iron. I'm not going to let her. Would I be more effective if I physically stop her from the binding, or should I try to bind it faster and and pull more will towards it? I know her her ability is greater than mine. Yeah. That's interesting. I've never really heard of a situation where someone's doing sorcery while someone else is trying to stop them, you know? Mm-hmm. It's kind of a, a different thing. So I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask how you're trying to stop her, right? That's fair. And based on that description, then that's what stat will go with. So describe what you're doing, and we'll use the stat that works for that. Okay. Every time Percival has tried violence, it has failed. Right. And the idea of hurting his own mother physically is... It's not something he wants to consider at this point, even for Flatiron. Right. So he is going to try to draw on what contract still remains and strengthen the bond. Cool. He will strengthen how much he has bound... Flat iron to himself to protect it from her incursion. Nice. So the binding strength is minus one, but we're just going to count that as one for the sake of this. Okay. Okay. Describe what it is that you're doing. You're you're kind of just pulling on that, like with your will. Not with. I mean, I'm not saying make a will roll. I think you're using lore. Um, I guess because we don't have sorcery very very well defined. I'm just asking you to describe what the sorcery looks like. And I think you're making a lower roll. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. So he picked up his stuff, right? So he has uh, his phone where he traces the intricacies. He pulls up several of the floor plans he just has in PDF on his phone. Nice. And he starts doing some sketch up to redraw the ley lines and refocus his efforts. And using awesome. his knowledge, his deep, intimate knowledge of this building pulling on everything his mother's taught him with what he knows about this place. She is foreigner. Yeah. And that is how he's going to beat her. Awesome. Sounds good. Take an extra die for that. Add it to the other die that is for the binding strength and add that to your lore. Okay. Good. She's rolling five dice. I'm rolling five dice as well then. Okay. So it's uh, kind of an even Steven. Ready? Here we go. That is not good. Nope. She beat you by one. Yeah. Yeah, she did. You're following her, and you're trying to stop this with your, but by drawing on the power of the contract between you and your demon. And the demon has just had it, and you can feel it. And you can also, as you as you are, are walking through the building, uh, writing up your blueprints, you can see signs that like there's been some water leakage from the roof, <sighs> and the building looks worn. You, you're walking, kind of trying to follow her, and she closes a door, and as soon as she closes it, you open it. But as when you open it, she's not there. And I think that's where we'll end it. <sighs> All right. Cool. Hi, this is Jason from the Gauntlet Gaming Community. If you enjoyed this episode of Comic Strip AP, please consider supporting the Gauntlet on Patreon. Our page can be found at patreon.com forward slash gauntlet.